Welcome to the regular January 15th meeting of the Sustainability Commission. Dan, would you do the roll call, please? <clears throat> Vice Chair Clark. Present. Commissioner Baker. Present. Commissioner Futterman. Present. Commissioner Friedman. Present. Commissioner Gothier. Present. Commissioner Goins. Present. Commissioner McCann. Present. Commissioner Santora? Here. Commissioner Wilson? Present. All present. We have a quorum. Great. Thank you. The, um, the next item on the agenda is the acceptance of the agenda. Um, the agenda was emailed um, to everyone and posted last Thursday, December 10th, per city policy. Um, do I have a motion to accept the agenda? So moved. A second? Second. And all in favor of accepting the agenda say aye. 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 And opposed, no. Accepted unani unanimously. Thank you. Now we'll move on to city manager and staff comments. Jay, do you have anything to present? Well, I hope you all had a chance to meet Patrick. Uh, we spent some time with him just a few moments ago, and uh, we're very glad to have him on board. We look forward to all the additional help he's going to provide us with um, moving your initiatives forward. Thank you. Um, Thanks, everybody, and uh, appreciate all of you who were involved in the hiring process, so thanks for helping make that happen. Um, looking forward to working with you all. Um, I did follow up on, I think, one of the questions that came up uh, perhaps at the last meeting uh, about the College of the Desert uh, construction that's happening at the Old Mall. And uh, I did talk to uh, Mac McGinnis about uh, their plans for construction and demolition and recycling. And uh, they are planning on um, keeping all of the concrete on site and uh, processing it and reusing it on site. Uh, and then they are also establishing uh, separ uh, separate waste receptacles or separate receptacles for the different types of recycled materials. So they're doing some uh, separation on site. Uh, so I, I think that they have some fairly significant plans for recycling um, their material or reusing their materials. So. Um, <clears throat> he did not have specific goals yet, um, and I know that they have uh, uh, submitted um, an uh, application for LEED certification, so um, that is, will be in the works. So we'll hear more about that, I'm sure, as they go along. Great. Thank, mm -hmm. thank you, Patrick. That's great information, and we can work on it more in the, the um, Waste Reduction mm -hmm. Committee meeting um, yep. you know, as, we go, as we go forward. I did learn also that um, there was some question previously about whether or not the whole building was going to be demolished, and I learned that it was. Mm -hmm. The main reason being that it doesn't meet, currently doesn't meet code for an educational institution. So thanks again for the information. The next item is commission and student liaison reports. Um, I don't think we have either, so we'll move on to public comments. This time is for members of the public to address the Sustainability Commission on agenda items and items of general interest within the subject matter jurisdiction of the Commission. The Commission values your comments, but pursuant to the Brown Act, cannot take action on items not listed on the posted agenda. Three minutes are assigned for each speaker. Is there anyone here who would like to make public comment? Please come forward. You can speak at the mic and state your name. Thank you. Uh, my name is Kim Floyd. I live in Palm Desert, and I just wanted to welcome Patrick to the uh, Coachella Valley, and I represent the Sierra Club as a volunteer. Uh, and I'm hoping that we will continue what has happened in the past in terms of joint efforts between uh, uh, my, my city of Palm Desert, Palm Springs, Seabag, on these important sustainability issues. So again, welcome and thank you for the time. Thank you. Thank you. Now, um, the next item is welcome and introductions. And um, what we have here is 
welcoming Patrick, our new manager of sustainability. Hopefully all of you have had a chance to speak to him before the meeting started. And thanks to Dan for providing the refreshments. And uh, hopefully that will become a regular thing. <laughs> <laughs> we would have to charge dues. Okay. <laughs> Is, is there anything uh, you would like to tell us or say about yourself, Patrick? Uh, sure. So um, I think many of you may have read information that I uh, provided through the interview process, but uh, I uh, have a pretty broad background in environmental issues, and so I'm really looking forward to working with you guys on all of the different things that you have on your agenda. Um, and uh, I think one of the things I, I really want to focus on moving forward is really just getting a handle on all that's going on and figuring out um, where we are and where we're going, uh, really, uh, because you guys have done such a lot, uh, so much stuff. Um, I want to just make sure that we're keeping track of it and figuring out how it's impacting the environment, the community, et cetera, and uh, really build on what's working and uh, move things forward um, in a structured way. So anyway, so that's what I'm going to be focused on, I, I think. and. Um, uh, I look forward to meeting each of you uh, as part of the subcommittee process or the committee process and um, working on and uh, understanding your your uh, issues a little bit better through that. So. Great. Thank you Thanks. and welcome again. Let's see. The next item is the uh, meeting minutes from the December 18th uh, meeting. The minutes were also emailed and, and um, posted to the website um, on December 10th per the city policy. Is there a motion to accept the minutes? So moved. Second. Okay. Moved by Commissioner Santoro and um, seconded by uh, Commissioner Baker. Um, all in favor of accepting the minutes, say yes. 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 <laughs> and opposed, no. Okay. Thank you. Now we'll move on to old business, and the um, first item there is the uh, status of the leaf blower exchange program. Programs. You, you oh, I'm sorry. I knew Gary wasn't here. <laughs> Gary wasn't here. Uh, okay. I was just going to do a quick report for okay. Gary from the recycling board report. He just stated that the uh, recycling and e-waste event that we had uh, last Saturday was a huge success, even though it was rainy. But uh, the uh, Desert Arc uh, filled up all of their bins in their truck with the e-waste and even had more they had to take separately. The uh, shredding and uh, trucks were full. So we had a very successful event. Great. Thank you. Let's see. Then, now, old business and the status of the leaf blower exchange programs. Um, Jay? Yes. <clears throat> Uh, we're pretty much at the status quo uh, as we were last month where uh, we were waiting for AQMD to provide us with more details and information on the, the, the available vendors and how they were going to operate the program, something we have been planning to just uh, piggyback on and uh, implement for uh, Palm Springs. As recall, AQMD has indicated they're going to prioritize uh, environmental justice areas, <clears throat> of which uh, Palm Springs tec technically is not. However, that does not mean they will not in include Palm Springs in the uh, rebate program. Uh, we did add uh, more information to the website to show uh, everything we did have available. Um, but other than that, we are still waiting for a bit more information from AQMD, and I believe that's forthcoming. It really should be very soon. Thank you. Thank you. And just in the interest of uh, communication, I did uh, make that same report at the 1PS meeting last Thursday and asked the uh, members to pass that on to their, to their NORGs. The next item under old business is the Sustainability Film Series Program. Um, Dan? is going to report on that. Uh, just a little bit, bit of background. We did um, have a discussion with, with Megan. She was here in, in uh, September. And at that time, she indicated that um, she was planning to have about four films between February and May, possibly one in January. And they were going to be on Thursday evenings. And the way this got on the agenda is I saw her when I was at the farmer's market on uh, January 5th. And she said that she would send the flyer for the program 
to us so that we could discuss it in, in the next meeting. And um, so Dan has been working with Megan trying to get information about the flyer. Okay, as you, the, the flyer that's posted up here, uh, I, I just received a, a couple hours ago, literally. And uh, it's, it's not yet complete. Uh, she had asked, uh, when I talked with her on the phone this afternoon, she asked for the commissioners to, put, to give some input on, on the uh, flyer um, before it goes out to the public. Um, she wants to add some more stuff to it as well uh, as some more applications to it that's going to happen. They're, they are going to go ahead and have the wine tasting with the organic wine and um, then have possibly some other speakers to come. The uh, film, The Need to Grow, is uh, the producer is in L.A., and she's talking with him about him possibly coming out to speak um, before the film. Does not know yet if there's going to be a cost associated with that. Uh, the January film is not going to happen, and the film they wanted, uh, she... They had all the trailers out and everything, but she contacted the producer. They're still in production for it, and so hopefully they'll have it for January of next season, next year. Um, so she, I did uh, speak with her, and she is expecting, I think, the two thousand dollars that we may we have made available in our budget. But uh, that is up to us to decide at the next. We'll have that on the on the agenda for the February. Um, so that's kind of where it stands at this point. Uh, do you have any questions? Did she mention if she's going to have a, an individual flyer for each of the films, like in the past, so that it gives a synopsis of the film? Um, she did not. In the past, I did the individual flyers, oh, okay. um, which I can do again. I think that would be great. It was a good thing to... I mean, it's nice to have this because you can see the lineup and then to get more details. Right. Great. Thanks, Dan, and we'll, we'll add that to the agenda for the next meeting. Let's see. The next, next item under old business is item three. Um, a little bit of history there on, on that. Um, it's a motion re regarding the color of trash and recycling containers. Um, back in, in October, um, we did discuss that. Um, it, was, it was at the time that we had learned that city council was going to vote on a new type of container for recycling downtown, and Rob was able to get, or Commissioner McCann was able to uh, get in touch with um, Councilman um, Roberts um, and, and express our opinion about the color of the containers. And um, following that, the item came off of the City Council ad meeting agenda, but we also, at our meeting in October, did um, make a resolution about the the color of the um, trash and recycling containers. Uh, it turns out that Dr. Reddy asked us to make that resolution at this meeting, and so what you have in front of you uh, um, is the motion, the, is the same wording of the motion that we made and passed at the meeting in October. And um, so I assume, Commissioner McCann, you'll, you'll make the motion. If I understand what the motion actually is, it's, it's the word. It's the wording. It's it's the it's the wording that's in the agenda. There we go. And it's the same. It's the same wording that um, we passed in in October. It's it's we're we're restating our motion. All right. So I'll just uh, restate the motion. Sustainability Commission recommends that there be consistency in design and color to conform to the norms of recycling and trash containers. Blue for recycling and brown for trash. Is there a second? Second. Commissioner, Commissioner Santora, is there any discussion on the motion? Yeah. I, I support the motion. I just uh, want to get in my head clear the process here. So we've already adopted this motion, is that correct? We, we've already uh, accepted or made the recommendation to the city. In the form of this language? In the form of this language in the motion. So what's the purpose of having another motion, uh, identical motion, at this meeting? We were asked to do it at this meeting. And for what purpose do you know? Uh, I don't know. <clears throat> Commissioner, I believe it's, it's yeah. yes, it's uh, making its way again uh, through uh, review for the city council. And uh, as uh, vice chair has indicated, we were asked to have this on the agenda. Um, 
I know you're aware of the another issue relative to process here, so I'm um, just sort of questioning why an agenda item is able to be placed at the request of uh, the city manager without some further explanation, and why other items are taken off of the agenda <coughs> without explanation. Uh, well, uh, on those, as you know, on other items, we do have input from uh, legal counsel who've uh, provided uh, information uh, regarding the item you're discussing, I believe. And on this particular one, it's 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 from the city manager is the communications from the city council. So we would think that uh, these are requests coming through the city council or for their benefit as they prepare to uh, take this item up again. Probably not answering your question no. as to specifics, <laughs> right? Yeah. Right. Uh, <clears throat> but in this case, it seems to reemphasize the recommendation that we made in the past, and the uh, Waste Protection Committee has been working pretty aggressively on trash and recycling containers. I'd, I'll uh, endeavor to, to discover some more information about um, whether what's going to come up at City Council is uh, an actual um, expenditure on a, uh, a candidate container for downtown that someone has selected because uh, it, we have not provided input on that yet. And we do have several candidates. We have some candidates. Okay. Any more discussion? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Unanimous? Okay. Now, moving on to um, old business item number four. Um, this is a follow-up to a, a discussion we've had over several months, and the last discussion we had was at the at the November meeting where um, we had a, a motion to accept a list of um, items relating to the smoking ban in Palm Springs. Um, Commis Commissioner Baker has gone back and has um, created a document with a lot more information and I believe clarification of um, things that came up at the last meeting, and he has um, presented a motion here. Um, would you like to, to read it? The motion reads uh, to accept the, to endorse the clean air, clean indoor air and health, pr health protection resolution of January 2019. In addition to what you see before us, there's also a letter that we received from school kids in the area. Uh, that's in your package and supporting materials as well as an Excel spreadsheet to help explain the particulars of the resolution. So that's the motion. Is there a second to the, to the motion? Commissioner. I'd like to second it just for discussion purposes because okay. I do have comments. I went through okay. the and I do have some comments. Okay, okay. great. Thank you. For, for discussion to put it on the table for discussion. Okay. Thank you. So now we're open for discussion. And one of the th first things I wanted to bring up is, you know, there were some questions that came up during the discussion the last time. And um, I want to ensure that the uh, people who had those questions have had the um, answers clarified by the, by the new document. Commissioner Friedman. Um, I'm afraid that I haven't. I, I, I have substantial concerns about how this ordinance covers or really doesn't cover um, marijuana. Um, I, based on my review, careful, hopefully careful review of the definitions, marijuana is covered really mostly in one place, and, and you have to look at the definition of smoking, or smoke actually, the definition of smoke um, covers marijuana, um, and then if you work through the remaining definitions, uh, it essentially is therefore covered in the ban because it's it's smoke, therefore smoking, and this is non-smoking. But my main concern um, is that there is a limited provision for tobacco, for smoking and tobacco retail, but as best as I can tell, this is a direct conflict with the city's um, 
uh, with this with the city's uh, cannabis policies. The council most recently, just at the December 19th meeting, approved a number of lounges. And so there clearly are cannabis lounges where people will be able to come in. They're all in the process of application uh, permits, um, construction, etc. But there are probably close to a dozen cannabis lounges um, that the city has already approved and permitted. And as best as I can tell, unless I've misunderstood how the definitions um, work in the operational section, these would be prohibited even though they're already allowed under the, 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 the city zoning code. So that's my main concern, and, and, and I appreciate an answer. You know, Perhaps I've misread how the definitions were, but I don't think it works with the city's uh, cannabis policies. And second, while I didn't go through a word-for-word -word review, um, it's not internally consistent. There are defined terms that are then not used in the ordinance. There is a title on, uh, on the first page on licensing of tobacco retailers and tobacco sales restrictions. There isn't an operative section, and that's logical because council just took care of that by adopting the, the county's rules. So I really can't support it in its current fashion unless those things are, are cleaned up because it's in the form of an ordinance. I'd really prefer seeing a clean ordinance and further work in particular with staff um, uh, on, on the cannabis issues. I, I'm just not comfortable that this sits well with the city's existing cannabis policies, at least in terms of allowing cannabis retail uh, and smoking on premises. Is there any other discussion? Uh, I just had a further question about exactly the, um, I understand the motion, but the resolution, is that in front of us, or is that the one that is uh, was entitled Attachment A, dated November 20th? Which, which is the resolution? The one in front of you, the, in this one. The attachment, this is just simply, are you referring to the spreadsheet? Is it the attachment? Gotcha. No, oh, that's just for your digestion. Yeah. Right. Regarding the marijuana res uh, ordinances that were just passed by City Council, uh, there was a little overlap when I was drafting this in the passage of those smoking lounges, but those would fall under the same regulations as for the cigar lounges, which are now in existence. Uh, that is not to say that you could not make a friendly amendment to change that. Well, I, I don't know how much work is required. That's, that's the whole point, is that I suppose I could make a friendly... I, well, I haven't made a... Mo well, there would be a motion on, on the floor. I, I would prefer seeing this with, with, with the clarifications. That's my, my personal preference of seeing an ordinance that has been fully integrated uh, with that because I'm, I'm not prepared to vote on, on a legal, what essentially is a recommended legal text without having those, those, those situations. It may not be that much drafting, but my preference is to wait until that's done before I can vote in, 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 in favor of it. That, that's my personal preference, um, having done a lot of legislative work myself. Um, of drafting a legislation. It's not, it's not internally consistent and it's not, I believe, consistent with the city's policy. So I support this substantively, but I just want to see, a, I want to vote, be voting in favor of what I consider to be an ordinance that's ready to go from our commission directly to city okay. council. And, and I don't think we're in that state yet. Almost, but perhaps, okay. but not, not yet. My understanding, though, was that this was not intended to be an ordinance, but a, a resolution that would provide information that would be considered by the city council in passing an ordinance. So this isn't a legal document, it's a document from the commission um, which covers the points that we had been discussing over the last several months. And a similar document has been forwarded to the city council from the Human Rights Commission as well. Uh, so the goal is for them to look at both documents and then come up with the actual ordinance themselves. We are just giving them sort of a ground print to go forward. All right, I'm, perhaps I'm, I'm, I'm confused because I thought, the, I thought we were voting to recommend this resolution. I'm, I'm in the packet and in one of the materials that Daniel said. I, so I thought that the text that on, in the packet was basically is that we were voting to approve that text. Again, I repeat, it's the 
just giving guidance to City Council, and there is another uh, resolution that they have in front of them that was just passed by the Human Rights Commission, I believe, either in December or earlier this month. And the goal is for them to work together. I've spoken to the city council members responsible for this, and they are in favor of reviewing both documents and creating a standalone document that will be voted on at city council meeting at the end of January. Is that, that this is going to be on the, because the council meeting is on January 23rd. Right. Is there a plan to have an ordinance that's uh, actually up for? I, I can't speak to the plan uh, to have an ordinance, but just looking at how this particular item had been introduced to different commissions, they uh, seem to have taken on uh, different paths, and ultimately they will be going back to the council, uh, which I believe <clears throat> actually has a subcommittee evaluating this information. So when that will come out, what their findings will be, I, I do not know. <coughs> what is the, is there a text of the resolution other than the, what is essentially a draft ordinance in the, in the packet for tonight? That's where I'm somewhat confused. Is there, I'm looking at the packet and there's, doesn't seem no, right. I did not draw the text of a resolution apart from what you see in the agenda. All right, well, I, with all due respect, I can't, I, I can't vote in favor of, uh, of it in this, uh, of essentially a draft ordinance that I think needs, need, need, needs more work. But that's just me. <laughs> Again, is this intended to be a draft ordinance? That is correct. That is correct. Okay. Commissioner, Commissioner Wilson. Yeah, um, I share Commissioner Friedman's concerns because looking at this, it reads as code. It reads as municipal code. So to vote on this, uh, we as the commission would be left with the impression that that's what we're voting to do is to vote on code. So I also... No, no, I, I would disagree. No, it references the codes because that was one of the pushbacks received prior that there were, there were not explicit code regulations. Therefore, I created the hyperlinks to give you the exact code references so you can see exactly the language that exists. Uh, the, there is no code. Everything that has a code is left blank. With all due respect, this text reads sections, title, definition, etc. That's how this reads. Yes, and that's how municipal code reads. Right. It's just a it's a ground print for them to work on. The commission itself does not have the authority to create a code. We simply recommend it to City Council. I understand that. Thank you. Commissioner Santora. Is there any way we can review the um, resolution from the uh, Human Rights Commission before we take, to see if we can see where the differences might lie and maybe address some of the other concerns that we've been raising? I was just re I just received a copy of that this week, so I haven't even personally looked at it myself. But that is something that could be done. Yeah, I had the same question. I, I would be very interested in seeing what the Human Rights Commission came up with. Okay. I would as well. Is there any other discussion? I have a question on the. California smoke-free housing policies under medical marijuana. It says allows for smoking medical marijuana only if the order is undetectable. Is it odor? odor. Yeah, the typo, sorry. Oh. Okay. There's one one thing I would like to get some comments on, um, you know, thinking back to the discussion we had in November when we had the the list of ten items and um, after we indicated that we um, wouldn't um, vote on passing them as a whole, we went through them one by one. And the one item that had the most opposition was the item about multi-unit residences. 
and that has been addressed in this document here. And um, I'm just interested in seeing if um, any of the commissioners have any comments about how that's addressed um, in this document. Basically, um, with rental complexes allowing um, up to 20% of the units to not ban smoking. So that's that was a you know. Mm -hmm. That wording is an attempt to address the concerns that we had in the discussion in November. And does anybody have any comment on that? Any, any? Well, I appreciated that it was addressed in in the draft. It was, though, it seemed a pretty unanimous feeling among the commission that the multi-unit housing and the marijuana elements were elements that didn't have general support. And so I would have preferred to see those excluded from the resolution and really address those that we all agreed on, you know, smoking at parades and in bus lines and that kind of stuff and, you know, banning that. But um, doing this as sort of a stepped process. I know cities like Santa Monica and Palo Alto and others have gone whole hog in there, but there didn't seem to be support, at least from this commission, to take that approach. and. This resolution, as it exists, includes all those elements that we had some heartburn over. Okay. Any other comments? So we have before us a motion to accept the wording in this document, and we've had discussion. Um, I believe we're ready then for a, a, a vote mm -hmm. on, on the motion. So all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. 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 Okay. So the motion fails. So what is our next step? Um, would we like to bring this back in February? Um, would you entertain more? More comments, Commissioner Baker? Why well, we need more direction? All I've heard are procedural comments today. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Santoro. Uh, for what it's worth, first of all, I want to thank you for all the work you put into that. Um, I would like to see what the Human Rights Commission has done and maybe some discussion about the points that are mm -hmm. divergent in any way, if there are. I, the, uh, from my understanding, again, not having fully read it, is that the major difference between the Human Rights Commission is that it's a 100% ban, does not allow for any uh, carve-outs for multi-unit dwellings, nor does it allow for a 25, uh, for multi-unit dwellings to have, say, a designated space out in a patio area as well. So it's more restrictive than this one. Okay, and uh, secondly, I guess the format in which their resolution is taking. Did you follow the same kind of format, or did they? I, I haven't, again, I didn't receive oh, that so until this week. Was, so the, that was the other thing that I sort of resonated with me, was the format. Uh, if we're interested in a resolution to achieve the goals that we seem to agree on, uh, it seems to me it'd be more productive to actually put it in the form of a resolution rather than a, um, uh, an ordinance, really. Um, and then uh, get that consensus to the city council, and we could always use the background information that you've already provided and others could <coughs> in order to help develop the language for an ordinance if they think they need that kind of assistance. That would be my preference. Duly noted. Okay. So where do we go from here? Shall we um, We'll be ready to talk about it again in February. We don't know exactly what the city council's schedule is. Is that correct for, for discussing this? I think they're discussing it this month, actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The subcommittee. The subcommittee, OK. You, you could all email me after you read it, email Patrick and I your suggested changes. Then we can then get those over to Carl, and we can bring it back. Uh, for February, if, if you're willing to put, give him some input as to what you would like to see. So we'll work with this existing document and make suggestions um, right. back, back to Carl. 
And in the meantime, you will send the HRC's document to I'll, us? I'll send the HRC to everybody. Okay, okay. Dan will. Yes. I'll, I can get it. Thank you. Now we move on to new business. And the first item under new business is the election of commission chairperson and vice chairperson. And I'll turn that over to Jay and Dan. Um, okay, for um, the election process, uh, one I guess one thing we need to decide first is that since the um, elections were postponed by six months and ev everything was uh, postponed by six months, you, we can either determine to have this election for just a six-month period or a year-and-a-half period. Um, probably what it would probably start at a six, at a six-month period, because then have elections again in July for the new fiscal year. So that would probably be what you were, what would be, I think, the best way to do it at this point. Um, in July, if we decide that everybody wants to stay where they are, then we can just reapp reappoint at that point. So do we have any elections for chair? Or nominations for chair? I nominate Roy Club. I nominate Roy. Roy, okay. Any other nominations? All in favor for Commissioner Clark to be named chair, say aye. 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 All who oppose, passes. Thank you. Yay. Okay. Now, um, any nominations for vice chair? Rob McCann. Any other nominations? All in favor of Commissioner McCann as vice chair, say aye. 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 All opposed? Commissioner McCann as vice chair. That you made it very easy on us. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> A six-month term, yes. So I guess I keep the gavel a little bit longer. <laughs> Thank you. Um, next item under new business is actually the next two items go together. They're related to World Environment Day. The uh, first item, uh, item two is formation of an ad hoc subcommittee to pr produce World Environment Day, the event, on Sunday, June 2nd. And then we'll be making a motion um, to uh, approve expenditures for World Environment Day. Um, there's information in the packet from Commissioner Futterman, um, one talking about the ad hoc committee and the need for the ad hoc committee. And an another, I believe, is a reissue of, a, of the report that you gave last June or July after the 2018 event, where you talked about the results, the attendance, and made some recommendations for the um, for the following year, which would be um, this year, 2019. So the, the first item is to um, form an ad hoc committee to work with Commissioner Futterman. And do you have anything you'd like to say um, um, before we have more discussion? Well, I welcome all of you. Any of you, who, a couple of you have mentioned that you'd like to be on this ad hoc committee, so that's great. Um, I welcome all your ideas. You know, I had some reflections from the last year, how to maybe change uh, this this next one coming up, part of that being having a networking time at the beginning so that people can, you know, meet all the uh, different exhibitors and have that time to really converse and not compete with the music. But I think that there, it would be great to have this, you know, celebratory aspect as well. Um, and hopefully, you know, if it, I'm hoping with my current position um, as Creek contact and not coordinator that I can rally enough support, you know, both between our commission as well as some community support to continue our environmental art contest. I think it's really um, an awesome opportunity for kids and adults, there is an adult category, to, to think critically um, and express in, in this way, thinking about the environment. And I've been rotating the five elements for the last 14 years, I think. 
Um, and I think it's an interesting way to just add a different flair to each year's uh, contest. So I'm hoping that that's something that you know you all feel is valuable. I'm hoping also that we can get maybe the art commission here, you know, city of Palm Springs, but also um, I've thought about approaching the Cathedral City Art Commission. This really is Coachella Valley celebrates World Environment Day, so it's not just Palm Springs, although we host it here. So to, to garner more support and hopefully, Patrick, um, you might like to also help with the outreach and, and it would be great to get more of the city, you know, there's the City of Indo Sustainability Commission. I don't know if they want to join us, but the City of uh, Palm Desert as well. I think that as we join together so that it's really an educational event and, you know, to get as many people there, of course, we can host thousands of people at the pavilion. And it is something that, um, you know, we, we already have that space reserved for the 2nd of <coughs> June. And that's a really nice in-kind donation from our Parks and Rec Department. So it, it really is a collaboration. So I welcome all of you. Is there anyone interested in participating on the ad hoc subcommittee with Commissioner Futterman? Yes, sir. I'd be happy to. Great. So we have Commissioner Santora and Gothier. And I expect we'll have some input from our new manager as well. Great. Okay. Thank you. And then moving on to the second item under the same subject, um, the motion um, <coughs> from Commissioner Futterman about the funding. Would you like to um, read that motion, make that motion? Um, yes. I, I created this budget. I, I was thinking it would come up. I'm sorry, I thought it would come up as more of a thing that you could see, but we can go through the different items and, and we'll see if, if you all think that this looks like um, at least a good start. Um, for the past few years, we've uh, been purchasing mostly, it's almost all been from the farmer's market, fruits and vegetables, and we've had local chefs donate their time to prepare um, plant-based um, delicacies. So I think it's been a really interesting partnership with the local chefs um, as well as the farmer's market. And, you know, this one day a year perhaps um, not having any uh, meat or dairy, which also, it, you know, it was presented to us last month, I think, about the Green Mondays. Um, and I think that that could also be something that we work, you know, possibly with city council in that. I think that... Um, Christy Holstage may have spearheaded that, I'm not sure, but I thought that that could be something that she partners with us. Um, the entertainment, in the past, this has sufficed to, you know, have an MC, a live band or two, <clears throat> and Flow Boxes is a really wonderful group of folks that bring circus entertainment. They, you know, dress up um, as jesters, and they come out on stilts, and bring hula hoops and get people up moving and dancing. And I think it's a great way to engage kids of all ages to enjoy and play. Um, so their presence has been wonderful. Um, so entertainment, about $1,000. We do also have about $300 in the kitty, which is still being housed at the Community Foundation in Riverside. So we have a little bit of money left over from last year to add to this. Um, and different costs sometimes come up you know, in the process. The advertising, you know, if you looked at the reflections from last year, we did a poll. Not everyone, I don't think, participated in that, but we had a variety of uh, these um, planner box pots and jelly beans. So people could choose how they heard about the event to try to reflect back, you know, what the best way of getting the word out is. And the billboards seemed to be the best, um, at least in that way. And so. Lamar, um, there's a different woman who loves that this is a nonprofit event and she wants to partner with us and has offered um, each billboard, the vinyl is $945. They are willing to um, sponsor the installation and the cost of the space. Um, last year, they were only able to give us, you know, one space 
um, as an in-kind donation. So this is already a bigger donation that they're offering. So for two billboards, it would be eighteen ninety, or three, it would be twenty eight thirty five, um, which is not much more than the twenty five hundred that we put in for two. And that that may be a way that we could, you know, have one on Interstate Ten, one on Gene Autry, and maybe one on Mesquite. Like I was thinking of those areas that are entrance ways into, you know, Palm Springs. And if any of you have any other ideas. I think that the electronic billboards are a little bit more money, and I don't know if we could possibly talk them into perhaps putting it there for the rotation because that could be another way to get more exposure. Um, so I, we've been playing phone tag, and she just committed to this price for us, so that's something that can be discussed. Um, we have decided to not do the radio ads, only nine people said that that's how they heard about it, and $520 seems like a lot of money for that few. And to choose one radio station, it's really kind of hit or miss. Even though it's a fun thing, it seems um, not as much bang for our buck. I would say um, we didn't do so many printed flyers and posters last year. I think that it is something that is good to have a little bit of, but as we're a sustainability commission, not using too much paper I think is better for us um, as a statement out there. Yes. Were you able to do the, I forget the name of the program, I on the Desert or whatever, the local news? Yeah, Roy set it up, yeah. and that was great. We, there was actually, I think, 28 people that heard about the event from there. And then there's some people that said they heard it from word of mouth, so there's you know ways that that might trickle in, and that would be an awesome thing, again, if we can get on I on the Desert, maybe some other news shows to get more exposure. And I think possibly if we get more city-wide involvement from around the valley, maybe we'll get um, more exposure. And if any of you have connections to the papers, for some reason, no matter how early I send them a uh, press release, they really haven't supported us, which I find interesting because it's a free community event, so it feels like that would be a really nice gesture. So I'll just invite, um, I mean, our ad hoc committee, we can maybe figure that out and also, you know, put the feelers out. But, um, you know, I think also using social media, that's free. Um, there's, you know, there's lots of these free papers. So, you know, hopefully now that we have uh, an ad hoc committee, we'll, we'll be able to get more on the free advertising as well. Um, the graphic artist... I don't even know if that's honestly enough money, but I, you know, to get the design, I think it would be great. We had a good design last year for the billboard. I don't know if that's something that we want to modify or. I think the image of the Earth is really profound. It's, I mean, you want something that's eye-catching and that it's, you know, kind of, um, I don't know. It, it just, it should be pretty simple. It was pointed out having you know, a sponsor on it takes away from the imagery, but that's also a way to get more sponsorship and partnership. And so, I mean, it's, anyway, so those are things that we can think about. Um, the environmental art contest. If we have a sponsor on the billboard, does that defray part of the billboard cost? It would, I mean, it wouldn't be our signature event, then it would be somebody else buying the rights to it in a way. But was that on the billboard? Not the last year, the first time that we had a billboard, it, we had a bunch of the sponsors okay. on there, or major sponsors rather, the, the logos. But it does, it does kind of muddy it a it's little bit, you know what I mean? It's distracting. Yeah. And so I think just getting people to the event and then, you know, honoring the sponsors is, is also good. I don't know. So we can, we can discuss that. Um, the environmental art contest, it costs about... Uh, $1,050 to give a $50 gift card to winning participants at each grade level and then in the various themes, <clears throat> the environmental, best environmental theme, best recycled art, best photo or digital art essay, and the Judge's Choice Award, also including stu special needs students, which was a category added a few years ago, and I, I love that. Sometimes you can't even tell that the student is special needs, but it, it gives them, you know, an opportunity to participate as well in case, you know, and uh, and the adult category we added in because there was a request. So, of course, if anyone wants to participate, I think it's a good idea. So um, I have this so that we're a third of the cost of the prizes. And 
uh, Friends of the Desert Mountains um, had said before that they would do it again, and so um, I'm, I'm pretty sure that they will participate, and I'm pretty sure that we can pretty easily get another $350. And the raffle prizes, uh, we have about $100. So, and we do, as I said, have about $300 in the kitty. So there's a little bit of room there. Um, if we want two billboards, the cost right now is at $41.40, or if we do three, it's uh, $5,085. So we could take that $85 from the kitty and still have a couple hundred dollars to play with um, if you all are in support of granting $5,000 for the event. And that's your motion. So, yes, my motion is, <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> um, yes, um, if the commission will grant $5,000 for this event, we can have three billboards and everything that's listed there. Is there a second to the motion? Second. Thank you, Commissioner Santoro. Is there any more discussion? Commissioner Collins. So I believe when we did the draft budget, there was a line item for World Environment Day in that budget? Yes. Already? And I'm wondering if anybody recalls what that amount 3, was. 3,000. 3,000, okay. Yes. And um, when we put the agenda together, we upped it based upon uh, Commis Commissioner Futterman's request, but it, it does say not to exceed, so. Um, certainly um, with sponsors as well, some of the costs could be offset. Right, and that could be offset, and then right. they wouldn't take it from us. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. so, any more discussion? So we're ready to vote then on the motion for the funding for World Environment Day. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Unanimous. Thank you. So now we move on to committee and commissioner reports. And the first one is Standing Subcommittee on Solar and Green Building, Commissioners Friedman and Goins. Excuse me, Mr. Chair. Yes. I mean, excuse me, Commissioner Friedman. Uh, I'm, this may be the appropriate place, I don't know. Um, but there was some allusion to the conversation we had before about placing items on the agenda. And I would like to have a moment of personal privilege to explain what that was about okay. and how to move forward. So uh, you may recall, those of you who were at the last meeting, there was a, um, a person from the public who addressed us about the Oswood Canyon situation. Um, I took that information seriously. I proposed a resolution, worked with the staff uh, to draft a resolution and to have it placed on the agenda for this meeting. Uh, we subsequently received a, an email uh, announcing that the city was involved in litigation and therefore the item would not be allowed on the agenda. That's why it's not before us tonight. Um, that was the extent of that in, uh, bit of information. So asking questions, we found out that the city's actually not engaged as a party in litigation, but is involved uh, in working through some issues in support of the uh, ordinance that was adopted. Uh, by referendum to save Oswood Canyon. Um, so uh, I've been going back and forth with the city attorney uh, about the actual state of the uh, litigation or the negotiations going on, which is one issue, uh, which is still a little bit muddy, but we've got a very Commissioner late... Santora, are, yep. is this regarding getting items onto the agenda? It is. Okay. It's because the... Canyon item is not agendized, so... Right. No, I'm talking about okay. why it's not agendized. Okay. Right. So um, we've gotten further clarification about whether or not there is, in fact, litigation. Having, setting that aside, the concern that, that I have, uh, and I thought I should bring it here because I was uninformed about how this process works and remain uninformed, that is that a item that is duly presented by a commissioner uh, to be agendized can be... Um, preempted or prevented from coming to the agenda without um, uh, any kind of explanation other than we were told, uh, which is very unsatisfactory as far as I'm concerned. So I raise that issue. I think we have been misinformed uh, or misled about the nature of the situation when in fact um, the 
in my opinion, the item should have been agendized and then we would have had an opportunity, an appropriate opportunity, to hear feedback from the city staff, the city attorney, uh, whether or not we should take action. Um, so I, <coughs> excuse me, um, I think it's important that as a commissioner and as commissioners, we understand the rules regarding this and uh, to date, those rules have not been clarified yet uh, an agenda item that I believe was properly presented, we've been prevented from discussing further tonight. So I want to bring that to your attention. Um, uh, the chairman has uh, recommended that we have some sort of uh, private discussions about the issues uh, uh, beyond this meeting, but I believe it was more appropriate that it have a public airing and we get a public um, explanation about this process and that particular issue on the record and not um, in emails that we don't share as a full commission. So thank you for your time. Thank you. And just, just adding on to the subject of getting things onto the agenda, I know the way it worked with, with Joe in the past is he would take notes as the meeting went on and make note of things that should be on the agenda the, for the following month. And that's the way, that's what I did from last month to this month. And I contacted the individuals who had brought things up, like Commis Commissioner Santoro, who had spoken about Oswood Canyon at the uh, December meeting. So we'll still follow that process. I, 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 as vice chairperson, I worked with um, Chairperson Jackson on finalizing the agenda which was then submitted to Dan for publication, and I'll work with uh, Commissioner, uh, Vice Chairperson McCann um, in the same way on the agenda. If, if any of you have something within the first week or so after a meeting that you would like to have on, an, on, an, on the agenda for the subsequent meeting, please, please contact me and I'll, I'll make sure it gets on the agenda or, and make, make sure I get clarification and um, get, get the item on the agenda. So, moving then to committee and commissioner reports, um, commissioners Friedman and Goins on solar and green building. Uh, thank you, Chair Jackson. Um, so on the green building solar side, um, Katie Barrows of CBAG, we met this morning, Katie Barrows of CBAG joined us for our committee meeting um, to discuss a proposal that we had received last month from the Center for Sustainable Energy that I had circulated about bringing their Energy Code Coach program for building and planning staff to the Coachella Valley. Uh, the building department, um, staff has contacted the building department. They have expressed interest in the proposal. And Katie will be following up with some of the other Valley cities as well as with um, Southern California Edison and SoCal Gas because they could provide some of the funding through their Coachella Valley Energy Partnership, um, which is administered by CVAG. And we're also looking at some of the other training programs, which would potentially be nowhere of much lesser cost, such as Energy Code ACE and CalCERTs. So our next committee meeting is uh, three weeks from today, the 5th of, uh, uh, 5th of February, um, and uh, I'll report back at the, uh, at the February 19th commission meeting about that progress and see what we can do in working closely with uh, CBAG on that. Uh, I saw Planning Director Flynn Fagg on my way in to the uh, meeting this evening and said I'd be following up with him on the solar zoning ordinance. Um, the council at its uh, meeting last week did repass on first reading um, the historic preservation ordinance, no change to the uh, provisions on solar facilities, uh, on uh, historical buildings, but um, the draft ordinance does have to be updated um, to include the new text, and now that it's likely to be go through council uh, at next week's meeting on, on second reading, and therefore adoption in 30 days, I think it's right to sort of move that forward. So hopefully I'll have some progress to report back at, uh, at, at next month's meeting. Um, as you saw from the materials that Daniel circulated, I'm working with 1PS on the renewable energy and water tours that the commission is co-sponsoring during the Neighborhoods USA conference um, in May. The tours will take place on Friday, May 17th from 4 p.m. to roughly 7, 7.30 p.m. And please let me know if you're interested in attending one of the tours. Um, there are probably one bus um, for, each, for each of the tours. There are going to be uh, 15 tours that afternoon. But if there's sufficient demand from commissioners and staff, we can add uh, to the tour, particularly for the renewable energy tour. The water tour, um, which DWA is organizing, is essentially the same as their regular tour. So 
Um, uh, if you're interested in one of the tours, I suggest the Renewable Energy Tour. Um, some of us had the great pleasure of going up to the windmills um, several years ago through uh, uh, count, then, now Council Member Middleton when she was uh, chairperson of 1PS organized that, and um, it was absolutely fascinating and educational. So um, if you're available, um, please let me know, and uh, hopefully we can find the budget. If we need to get a second bus, hopefully uh, the couple hundred dollars the city can. Um, yeah, it would be the city one way or the other, but it would probably come out of the commission budget. Yes. How far is the bus ride? Um, so the buses will be the route. The route for the energy tour is the Spiffy um, Solar Collection Facilities at the at Demuth Park. If you saw the video, so that's stop one. Uh, second stop is a brief stop at um, CB Link by Asina, the new section of CB Link, and we'll only have 15 minutes at each of those, so that we can devote most of the time to the uh, to the windmills. So we'll be up at the windmills, hopefully for close to two hours. Obviously, the sun will go down. Um, but that's the objective, to get up to the windmills around 5.15 and probably be uh, at there until somewhere close to 7, but then the sun will, sun will go down. I'd definitely like to participate. Uh, but uh, it should be, um, should be lots of fun. I mean, you can theoretically always join us by car if you're not able to get the bus, which will be leaving at 4 p.m. promptly from the convention center. So if you want to just say, hey, I'm coming up to the windmills, we'll be there by 5.15, and you can just drive up there. I think I got, I think I got your situation. Just meet us up at the windmills around 5.15, uh, and, and that would be fine. What were the dates? Again? Friday, May 17th, uh, 4 p.m. to roughly 7 p.m. Do we have a little bit of time, but um, we're, we're working on that. And then, as you may recall, Commissioner McCann and I, Vice Chair McCann and I. Thank you, uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, <laughs> have a uh, workshop that we're doing, so we're going to get ourselves organized on that. And I don't know when that will be. Uh, it'll be during the NUSA conference, either the 16th, uh, Thursday the 16th, or earlier in the day on Friday the 17th. So as soon as our slot is assigned, we'll report back. And you're, of course, invited to join us for that, I hope. Um, and that's it for me. Uh, I'll let Commissioner Goins talk about our wonderful Modernism Week event coming up in just a few weeks. Just really briefly, the session is scheduled for February 23rd from 2 to 3.30 at Camp Theater. Um, we have two speakers confirmed, uh, Dominique Hargraves from USGBC LA and Dylan Deers from OJB Architects who did a, a remodel, a renovation of the landscape at uh, Sunnylands a few years ago, so it should be a good program. So invite everyone you know to come out, and I think it'll be a, a good session. February 23rd, yeah, 3.30. Thank you, Commissioners Friedman and Goins. <clears throat> the next uh, standing committee is Waste Reduction. Um, Vice Chairperson McCann. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, <laughs> I had uh, expected this to be shorter than, than it's going to turn out to be, just, just a little bit because of the uh, small amount of time that's, that's transpired since our last meeting. Uh, but just a couple of things have happened since I submitted uh, our report. Um, as far as the uh, potential ordinance on plastic foodware and plastic straws, um, as you know, we all unanimously passed a resolution to send to City Council uh, requesting that they move forward with a comprehensive ordinance um, similar to the one that uh, the City of Long Beach, for example, passed last year. And the, the only thing I'll report on that today that is not in this report is that I sent that information on to uh, city council members yesterday. And uh, Christy Holster has responded with, she's gonna try to put it on to a city council uh, meeting agenda. Uh, the, uh, our effort to divert and recycle the wet organic waste fraction from um, our municipal solid waste stream. Uh, again, I've got down here no new developments to report. There actually is a little bit of one. Um, this, so this was generated by uh, a chance meeting with Jeff Coors last Thursday and uh, he asked me what the latest developments were on it and, and what's been going on. Um, and in that respect, I, I talked to uh, our contact at Veolia, which is the wastewater treatment plant and company owner, uh, yesterday, David Schneider. And uh, he filled me in on a meeting that, that occurred in November. Um, Jay, were you at that meeting by any chance? 
call the specific meeting. Okay. Sure. And it's a, it was to do with the wastewater treatment plant. There's a 20 year um, plan to upgrade it uh, and to incorporate some new regulations, especially with methane flaring and that sort of thing. Uh, and in that uh, context, this Energia um, press that we've been talking about as, as adding to the wastewater treatment plant, uh, it, it's really just a part of this larger picture of wastewater treatment plant um, improvements and, uh, and the like. So uh, where we stand now is I also was informed that uh, in terms of this capital improvement plan on the wastewater treatment plant, there is actually a contract that's been put in place with uh, an engineering consulting firm called Stantec. And uh, the funds have already been appropriated for it. So an outstanding question that I sent to, um, to Marcus just uh, today is to find out if uh, the energia part of this um, might be something that they might be able to sub subcontract out uh, from the Stantec contract, or whether Stantec is gonna do the engineering analysis themselves and just to find out what the status of all that is. So I don't know the answer. Uh, hopefully we'll get more information soon. Um, and then last but not least, the battery recycling project. I do not have any new developments to report on that. And if anybody else does, please uh, speak up. And I do. Um, I did, um, one of the things that uh, we had planned to do is to go around to the various city locations that we had designated to uh, have the drop-off containers for the batteries at. And I did uh, go to two of them on um, Monday. Uh, one was the library, and they were very open. Jeannie Kays I spoke to, and, and, and um, another lady, Cheryl, I think, who's head of tech services. I spoke to both of them. They were very positive on it, and we talked about um, where, to, where the container would be put and so forth. And I also stopped at the Leisure Center and had a shorter conversation there. I intended to go to other places, but it was pouring by that time, so <laughs> I, I went home. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, did make a, I did make a start on it, and um, my intention is to go to a couple of other places uh, tomorrow, like Fire Station 2 and Demuth Park, and just to look at the layout and to, to talk to them about it. But what I would propose is that, um, that now, um, as Dan put in the minutes, we had kind of saved this project for Patrick <laughs> so that he could, put, he could put his stamp on it since it was a brand new project. So I, I propose that we meet very soon to start working through more of the details of, of getting it started because there's really nothing stopping us now. We have the funding and we have the plan and there's just a lot of details to work out so um, we can set something up for that. All right, I think that's it. The next is the Ad Hoc Subcommittee on Walkability and Pedestrian Planning, Commissioners Wilson, Gothier, and Futterman. Well, let's see. We, uh, we have a meeting coming up on the 22nd. We don't have any news on the SCAG grant. We've reached out to uh, Don Ueno and from engineering. from engineering to get an update on the status of the SCAG grant. Um, hopefully that's going to see some action within the next couple of months. Um, there was something else, though, that I was forgetting. We didn't do a written report this month. No, but we were based on last month's discussion of scooters in town. We, if oh, the right. commission was interested, we were, as an ad hoc committee, interested in taking, taking that on and coming up with a report on, sort of what some of the other cities are doing in terms of regulations on that. San Diego just adopted some new regulations uh, on in December regarding the deployment and use of scooters throughout their city. San Jose is in the process of doing that. We think those could help inform some of those if that's something that this commission thinks council would be interested in hearing from us on. Yeah, thanks for the reminder because I did notice in the reports that Dan distributed that the, um, uh, the actions from 2004 actually addressed scooters really from a recreational 
perspective instead of from a transportation perspective. So I think even though that's only been 15 years, uh, it's probably due for an update. And I noticed too that they are, the scooter definition was a manually powered vehicle rather than motorized. So yeah. their, their definition of scooter. Yeah, big changes since then. Yeah. So I saw a lot of nodding of heads, so we could, we'd be happy to work on something and put it on next month's agenda. That would be great. Thanks for pulling that up, Dan. From the days of Mayor Odin. It wasn't easy to find. <laughs> okay. the, the next item is the Ad Hoc Subcommittee on Film Festival Programs, Commissioners Futterman and Gothier. There's really nothing new to report on that with the January film having been canceled, um, but we are going to attend the February, March, April, May ones to inform the, the two-day festival that we're planning around the opening of the the reopening of the farmer's market in October. Um, so we'll keep you posted okay. on that. Great. Thank you. And ad hoc subcommittee on bicycle routes and cycling, Jim Flanagan. Hi, I um, was away last month, but I think the month before I sent around a list of ad hoc items that were on there. And, um, I looked through it and I, I talked to engineering a little bit beforehand and some of them we're already working on, some of them are not going to happen, but there's one or two of them that seem like they might be a good idea. So am I supposed to put together a motion or can I just continue to work with engineering on this or what's the best way to handle it? And I guess it depends upon what you're trying to accomplish. So specifically one of them was we said, we talked to engineering about, well, can we put any bicycle paths on the re-engineering of Indian Canyon with two-way street. And they kind of said, no, that's not a good idea. And then the other recommendation from Brett and some of those guys were, well, can we maybe re-emphasize Bellardo and put a green line and a uh, green painted stripe through Bellardo on Bellardo Street to make it clear that it's a bicycle? Because it's kind of unclear in spots. And engineering said, oh, yeah, we could consider that, but I don't know. It's a little confusing. So they're open to it, and other cities have done it. And I like that idea if we can't have Indian Canyon making Bellardo much clearer as an alternative pedestrian an alternative um, vehicle pathway. So I think it's a good idea. I'd like to talk a little bit more with engineering to see, oh, there's some weird code issues or something like that, but I don't know where to go next. I think it would be good to vet it with engineering uh, as much as possible and then... Okay, um, I'll, I'll keep working with him and then if I can come up with something that sounds like it's um, a motion, then I'll bring it back next time. That would be appropriate. Okay. Point of clarification, do you mean the solid green lane or just the green chevron? Solid lane? green lane. Okay. And, and the, the problem is it's confusing. I mean, they do, they do it in a couple of cities already, but it's a little bit confusing about can cars drive on it or can cars not. But if you're, you know, I ride my bike down Bellardo all the time, and there's already, you're competing a lot with a lot that's going on there. And I'd like, I'd feel a little more secure if it was, you know, a green lane. I just like, I feel more comfortable on this. <laughs> so, I um, mean, then the other thing is I was talking earlier with Dan, and I guess I need to fill out the application for um, Bike Friendly City. So I should start working on that. Right. Uh, we we started it once before, but it, like I said, it's, it's a long process, and uh, we we'll, we need help from engineering and from police department and, and a lot of others. But it's something we should probably move forward with. It helps with uh, um, our tourism uh, for being a bicycle friendly, bring more bicycle riders to the city, and knowing that it is a bicycle friendly city. And I'm happy to shepherd that along. If there is there any if there's any staff assistance, I could probably. Um, help. Maybe you can help steer me down in that direction because some of the things may be beyond what I'm going to be able to do. So I'll talk to you about it more. We'll be happy to help. Okay, that's it for me. Thanks. I just have a question for you about bicycle routes. I, I know when um, Joe resurrected the bicycle subcommittee and, and you got involved, there was some discussion about um, taking, another, taking another look at additional bicycle routes throughout the city and, and Possibly ending up in an update of the of the map, which we, I think it was about two years ago that we finished that, maybe a year and a half ago. So, is there any bigger picture that you're looking at? 
Well, there are a couple of, of weak links, like there, like we're one of the the, the, the one that Tuckies River one where it crosses Sunrise. It's kind of a poor. There's a couple of bad things that need to be kind of repaired there, but um, nothing that we're really proposing right now. I mean, they're, they're 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 not a real bad situation. But and then no, we're not. We haven't really set out to put together, uh, change the bigger plan. I mean, I think okay. there's a lot of routes on there right now, um, other than. Um, South Palm Canyon from Murray, uh, Murray Canyon down to Laverne, which I understand from David, there's not a lot of, um, of support for that. However, it is kind of a one-lane street that's really wide and narrow and wide and narrow, so I'm still supportive of it. But You may want to try after, uh, after November. That's all I can say. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, well, it's on the back burner then until November. <laughs> Okay, so for now you'll focus just on the yeah these couple you, of these couple of other ones you talked about. Okay, and I know there was some talk about putting the scooter thing. I'm, I brought the scooter thing up before, and I wasn't here this last month. So whatever you propose, I'm sure it'll be fine. But um, I did notice in the ordinance that Dan sent around scooters aren't allowed anywhere within the downtown limits, which I find to be a little restrictive. So maybe that could be something we could support. Um, for alternative transportation to be allowed within city, I mean, you know, the downtown core. And I, I, speaking of scooters, I, I asked Dan to document the discussion that we had last month where people brought up the pros and cons of, of scooters. That way we'll all have that information in front of ourselves for further discussion. All right. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you, Jim. Did you have a comment? Yeah, before Jim steps away, um, just to comment on that, because the um, there were two pieces that Dan sent us. One was related to scooters and one was related to skateboards. So that was kind of tricky because there was a distinction between what could go on sidewalks and what couldn't go on sidewalks. So we'll have to address that. But uh, also, I don't know if you caught it, but uh, former commission... Chair Brett Klein was on the news just the other day uh, with the ghost bike dedication on Ramon Road for, uh, uh, it's when they uh, place a, a bicycle that's been painted white uh, showing where somebody has been killed by a vehicle. Uh, yeah, so that was touching. Hmm. Oh, I missed yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. That was on. Chief Nalder mentioned at 1 PS that this person, unfortunately killed, was a candidate, was about to be hired by the fire department, uh, and it was a real loss. Apparently, somebody absolutely extraordinary who I apparently already had an offer to join the, the, the fire department. So um, when we heard that, that was very sad and meaningful uh, last week to us. So uh, more issues we have to deal with. Thank you. Next, we move on to wellness. Commissioner Baker. So for wellness, uh, I was asked to look into the Green Monday. Uh, so I did contact the group behind Green Mondays. Uh, it's not exactly a tight fit for Palm Springs, but we do have some options. The, the bottom line is the way it's set up, the city of Berkeley has adopted it, but it's for the city itself because they have a city cafeteria and things. So the city any city events on Monday, they're creating a meatless option, and they're sort of pushing that. You know, they'll still be meat and fish options, but every Monday they'll have a meat option. Uh, the other thing we could do, though, is to encourage restaurants in the city to have a green Monday. So like you see at several restaurants, they'll have Prime Rib Tuesday or Thursday. Uh, we would encourage them to do a meatless Monday. They, the organization does have some printed materials that could be distributed to restaurants. Of course, it would be completely voluntary. It would just be a simple resolution from the city council to encourage restaurants to adopt the Green Monday policy. The other alternative, uh, which would take a little more work, is to go to the school district and to encourage the school district to have a Green Monday option for cafeteria services. So how should we proceed on this? I'm just looking at those. So those, that's the information we have from the Green Monday group. And that's, that's good information. It gives us, gives us some options. It's a, it's a matter of getting out there and 
talking to people or writing a resolution and passing it and sending it on to the city council. So I'm willing to go speak to a few restaurant owners and just get some feedback if anyone else, I mean, we could all, we all go out and eat. I, 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 I guess I would, and it's not necessarily a motion, but a suggestion that we could report back next week, or next month, over and see what our experience is speaking to the places we like to go eat and just ask if they'd be interested or what their comments would be on having something like a Green Monday promotion. That, that sounds like a good plan if you'd like to do it. Anybody else interested? Just a question about what you found out about it so far. Is there some uh, PR advantage um, that we could offer them in terms of advertising or a more global approach to getting people's attention over that? This group does is sort of a global thing, but it's not anything, you know, there's a website, but they, Chrissy Holstead shouldn't have any personal responsibility. I contacted her and she said, oh, I just got this and, and forwarded it to you. So it wasn't anything she had, had a vested interest in. Uh, so it's just, I don't say this, um, it's a nice idea. It's just a kind of a feel good kind of thing, but it does. I, I'm sure there would be some restaurants that would would endorse it, and they have little stickers you can put on a window, stuff like. I asked if they had tabletop little things like this they could give to restaurants. And say, oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> In theory, their online menus could feature something on Mondays, uh, a meatless. Um, it might get them some customers. I don't know, I'm not sure. So there are probably other ways if we could also create a list of those restaurants and, yeah. you know. Oh, yeah, we could put it on our, our, our website. On our website, and, website. you know, it, I think it would make, that would, that would be a pretty big impact that they're participating. I mean, it could draw traffic to our website. Did, I believe there is a city restaurant group where they meet once a month or something to that effect. Hotels. Is it hotels or hotel hotels. slash restaurant? Uh, hotels and maybe one restaurant. Oh, so there's no restaurant? <laughs> not, not that I'm aware of. Uh, and a uh, council member or... Hospitality. Hospitality Association. Right, hospitality Association. Yes. Yeah. Restaurants don't show them. Uh, it's it's uh, the ones I've seen. It's... Mostly one, one consistent restaurant, but there may be a few. I, I should. Uh, there's also the um, Main Street group, which yeah, uh, the does, Main Street group. Okay, well, Main Street does have restaurant members. Uh, I should have mentioned that. I'll try. I'll talk to you, and I'll try sure. and reach out to them. Okay. okay. And they, last, they meet monthly. And lastly, I was just. I some of you know, I'm an avid swimmer. I swim every morning at our our pool, and I just found these uh, brochures. This is the winter, fall edition. So I'm assuming there's going to be a new one coming out for the spring that has tons of information on biking, yoga classes, exercise things. Hmm. Did That's you say go go class? No, yoga. <laughs> yoga. Y o g a. Don't get too excited, Graham. <laughs> That's That's okay, so it sounds like for now we'll just kind of do a grassroots approach on. Green Monday and uh, Commissioner Baker will talk to some restaurants. If anybody else wants to do the same and report back, we can we can discuss it more during this time at the next meeting. I'd be happy to provide some suggestions on those restaurants that I want to go to, but they don't <laughs> they don't provide vegetarian options, so they're always ruled out. But uh, that could change. I have a list. <laughs> and, and some of the material that Commissioner Baker provided was really good in terms of. Um, you know, giving the amount of greenhouse gases that come from cows and chickens and so forth, I think that that's a very strong argument that can be used uh, in, in talking to restaurants and other people. Thanks. Moving on then to water, Commissioner Friedman. Yeah, yes, Sir Jackson, two things to report. I was at the, this morning's CWA meeting. Um, <laughs> to chair. Sorry about that. Patrick. We'll give you a couple of months. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Chair Clark, sorry about that. Uh, DWA added, um, uh, said that its customers achieved uh, a um, 
13.4% reduction in potable water production in December compared with the same month in 2013. And cumulative savings over the last 12-month period is 13.8%. And cumulative savings uh, beginning in June 2016 when DWA put its 10 to 13% target in place is 16.4%. And obviously with all the rain this week, there should be some good water conservation. Um, the more important news is the DWA announced that they still have funds available in the 2018-19 conservation budget for rebates for converting grass to desert landscape and efficient sprinkler knowledge nozzles. DWA is considering another community forum for the landscape community to present the rebate programs and in the meantime information about their rebate programs is available on their website. So hopefully, uh, as you know, the city has been looking at a potential project with uh, Victoria Park and perhaps if that ever moves forward, there still be maybe some bill, still be some money available. So good news is that uh, conservation is uh, continuing. Great, thank you. And outreach, anything else from Commissioner Futterman? Not, not currently. Next okay. month. Thank you. Now we're at Commissioner comments. Does anyone have anything additional that they'd like to add? I, I would one. like to just oh, say sorry. I was at the Leisure Center today and uh, Janice was telling me that a fellow had come in about the battery recycling and she was really excited about it and so I think that that's great and I think having that at our different locations will just make it, um, you know, make it easy for people to recycle batteries so that's great and somebody came in while I was talking to her that got a bike map so I just, I, I like just reporting that, you know, what we're doing is good. Great, thank you. Um, I just have one. Um, the 1PS annual picnic is coming up in March, and in the past, the, the commission has been a sponsor of the picnic. So I have, if, Dan, if you haven't gotten it yet, I have a copy of the application to be a sponsor, so um, I'll pass that on to you, and we can discuss it next month. Anything else? Just wanted to mention that the bus service from uh, Palm Springs, Los Angeles, is now stopping in uh, downtown Palm Springs, oh, right in front of the hospital. That's a change they appear to have made just light right now because I had booked a trip to go to L.A. on Sunday out of North Palm Springs by the freeway, and they changed it, and it now picks you up uh, right in front of uh, Desert Regional on North Indian Canyon for the same fare. So um, for those of you who are interested in a sustainable <laughs> ride, to uh, Los Angeles, an hour and 45 minutes direct into Union Station for $10. So uh, um, there's still, of course, the Amtrak service, um, but that provides additional uh, options, transportation options, um, to get from Palm Springs to, to L.A. Is that Flix? Or? Yes, yeah. Flix Bus, yes, Flix Bus, and they have a good app. Uh, there. Um, and um, Council Member Middleton has been mentioning in her role as uh, the city's de designee on the Riverside uh, County Transportation Commission um, that the, they're looking into getting uh, train service in um, for the festivals in 2020 because of uh, road construction expected on State Route 60 um, through the Badlands um, in the winter. So hopefully we'll have some more trans sustainable transportation options in the next year or so. Flixbus, F L I X B U S, and there's a there's an app. There's an app for that. Yes. <laughs> Any other commissioner comments? When does the hazing begin? <laughs> That's illegal. <laughs> this in this day and age. So, that brings us to the end of the. Um, Agenda. Our next scheduled regular meeting is February 19th in this room at 5 p.m. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Adjourned. Oh.